that yes, explains that's everything, right. right? Yeah. Yes. This uh, random dynamics should mean that an enormously complicated theory evolves the unified theory. Ah. But you don't have to know which one it is. Hmm. And, and how Instead is... of the proposals on the market, so-called ground unified theory, where you assume some relatively simple group based on a gauge group, SU5, and so on. Mm -hmm. But this is really simple groups, simple, uh, simple models. Uh, then this simple model should give you uh, what we see. But in random dynamics, you say, ah, it's really a very complicated one. And then it might effectively look like standard model or something like that. But, uh, but, but even that you have a quantum theory, and uh, you should even from random dynamics of the general uh, complicated theory derive that you should have quantum mechanics that you should have. So we hope that also quantum mechanics and rotation symmetry and, uh, and, and existence of space and existence of time and things like that should come out of the complicated theory and not even depend on the details uh, rather than you should put it in. Ah, okay. So we would start from a much more general and be very ambitious with respect to what we should derive. <laughs> very, very interesting, Holger. Very interesting. And one of the very first things we think we had a little bit of success in deriving along this line, that was the number of dimensions. So like the uh, superstring theory, which predicts the number of dimensions, namely one plus nine. Yeah. Nine space, one time. Our random dynamics uh, tend to give us one time and three space, which is much better. It's easier, huh? No extra that. dimension yeah, needed yeah. to rescue it. <laughs> but in some sense, there's a little bit of extra dimension, but they are so different that they are not really counting as dimensions. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and another thing that comes out, uh, that is uh, that out of this random dynamics comes in some sense the idea also of this imaginary action we have talked most about, yes. which gives the closure of LAT and so on. Mm. And uh, uh, that comes this way, that we have a not very convincing and uh, not extremely easy way that we may pretend to derive quantum mechanics and... and uh, a form of a Feynman uh, Wenzel Dirac uh, pathway integral formulation. So we are, uh, we are in a way pretending that we can derive from this random dynamics by a relatively long series of arguments um, a formulation of quantum mechanics in the form uh, which is this functional integral a way which uses an action. So we are deriving quantum mechanics in a formalism which uses an action. Mm. And then we have a little difficulty in the first step to see any reason from this derivation why this action should be real, but we rather get it complex. Mm. So you see, out of the random dynamics, we derive something that is a quantum mechanics formulation by the help of an action. We don't really know exactly what the action is, but can perhaps get some properties. But this action has at first no reason to be real, so it should probably be complex. So that means that we derived was this model of the complex action model rather than the usual model. Mm. So in this way, it becomes a little bit of the failure of the random dynamics derivation of the property known in ordinary physics that the action should be real. It becomes a failure, but this failure becomes the installation of the proposal of our theory with the complex action. So that means that if you should find 
that LHC get some bad luck in the coming months. Then it would support the story of the imaginary action. And then indirectly, it would be a positive point to the believability of our random dynamics. <laughs> so these theories hang, hang weakly together. Oh, I see what you mean. And so what we can do here then, uh, Holger, as a way of closing off, is that we will we will be watching with uh, with uh, great interest basically what what is going to happen how now here then in February when they decide to start it up again and yes. uh, keep an eye on it and, and see what's happening and see if your theory indeed is uh, supported or not depending on their findings right yes that's right <laughs> very very interesting well i mean again I, i can't thank you enough for your time holger i know how busy you are and how how Uh, you know how much research you guys are doing over there. So we really appreciate having you on the program today and talking about some of your work and research. And as I said, we'll be watching closely and with interest in re in regards to what happens down at the LHC. So thank you so much, Holger, for coming on the program. Thank you, Yasef. I hope you've enjoyed listening to our program with Holger Beck Nielsen from the Niels Bohr Institute and follow along in some of the complex but interesting twists and turns. We'll keep an eye on the developments at CERN and the LHC, of course. Keep an eye on RedEyesCreations.com for upcoming guests and topics. And uh, don't forget to leave your suggestion in our member section. And feel free to use our comment functions, now available on all the radio and TV information pages. My thanks to Fredrik, Elizabeth and Lana. From a cold Sweden, we say bye for now and we will talk more with you soon. Cheers. Cheers.